Ever since I got bit by that spider, I've only had one week where my life has felt normal. With the second trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home, we've got a decent grasp of what's actually going on in this MCU sequel. Tom Holland's Peter Parker is going to face a real identity crisis and an entire team of familiar Marvel villains in his latest big screen adventure. But that's not to say we don't still have plenty of questions about No Way Home. Let's take a deep dive into the new trailer to see what it reveals and the burning questions that remain about Spidey's return. There are others out there. We need to send them back. So, Scooby-Doo this crap. Spider-Man's name is Peter Parker. What the f First No Way Home trailer made it clear this sequel opened shortly after the events of Spider-Man Far From Home, with Peter and MJ in the immediate fallout of J. Jonah Jameson leaking Spider-Man's secret identity and accusing him of murder, which leads to Peter being taken into custody. It's less clear what happens immediately after Peter's arrest. The first trailer also shows us a glimpse of Peter returning to school and facing the dumbstruck stares of his classmates. The second trailer mostly skips over this material and focuses more on Doctor Strange and the invading villains. It would seem Peter is able to deal with the immediate legal fallout of being outed by JJJ, leaving him to pick up the pieces of his personal life. The question is how, and who might be helping Peter Parker win his freedom? How does a poor kid from Queens beat the system? If there's any truth to those persistent rumors about Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock appearing in No Way Home, this would probably be where he steps in. Another possibility is we could meet Tatiana Maslany's Jennifer Walters ahead of her debut in the upcoming She-Hulk series. However, it's just as likely the movie will have a simpler explanation for this question. Aunt May is dating Happy Hogan, former personal valet to one of the richest men in human history and one of the few people that knew Peter's secret before the rest of the world did. Happy probably has plenty of resources of his own for situations like these. What's happening? They're starting to come through and I can't stop them. Even after two trailers, we're still unclear how exactly the multiverse factors into the plot. We know villains from the past Spider-Man movies like Alfred Molina's Dr. Octopus and Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin are making the jump to the MCU. We don't know whether Peter himself will visit other worlds over the course of the movie. The title would seem to imply as much. We know the plot hinges on Doctor Strange casting a spell to make the world forget Spider-Man's identity, only for that spell to go haywire and weaken the barriers between universes. Even as we see these iconic villains enter the the MCU, Spidey himself may be lost in the multiverse and trapped with no way home. But if that is the case, we see little evidence in this footage. Apart from a few shots showing us that trademark Doctor Strange dimension bending magic, most of these scenes look to be taking place in the MCU as we know it. So will Spidey be traveling to other worlds, or will this film be more akin to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, where the action is mostly confined to one world? You're flying out into the darkness. To fight ghosts. Second trailer confirms a number of long-standing casting rumors. Molina's Doc Ock, Defoe's Green Goblin, Reese Ethan's Lizard, Jamie Foxx's Electro, and Thomas Hayden Church's Sandman are all returning. That's quite a roster, but we can't help but wonder if there are even more villains on tap. Given how many incarnations of the Sinister Six Spider-Man has battled in the comics, six would seem to be the magic number for the big supervillain team-up. And it's worth remembering that not every villain from Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield movies is represented here. We don't see Topher Grace's Venom or Paul Giamatti's Rhino. And while you could argue we're looking at James Franco or Dane DeHaan's version of Green Goblin in this shot, it's probably just Defoe's Goblin wearing goggles instead of a helmet. And that doesn't even count established MCU villains who might round out the Sinister Six. Could Michael Keaton's Vulture break out of prison to join this team? That might explain why we see Adrian Toomes as part of a prisoner transfer in the Morbius trailer. Will Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio rise from the grave? Could Venom Let There Be Carnage's mid credit scene be setting up Tom Hardy's Venom to join the Six? No Way Home certainly doesn't need more villains at this point, but would Marvel really stop this close to giving fans a true Sinister Six on the big screen? They all die fighting Spider-Man. It's their fate. The second trailer also establishes the motivations for these returning Spider-Man villains. They're all fated to die fighting Spider-Man and they seem intent on killing the MCU Spidey and rewriting their own destinies. The problem is, this logic doesn't apply to every character. 
Of the five, only three actually died in their original movies. Lizard survives his clash with Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man in 2012's The Amazing Spider-Man, and not only does Sandman survive the events of 2007's Spider-Man 3, he and Peter make peace with each other in the end. What reason would he have to hate Spider-Man now? This raises the question of whether some of these characters might be from universes other than the Maguire-verse or Garfield-verse. Fox's Electro also looks quite a bit different from his original appearance. Do these characters hail from alternate universes where the events of Spider-Man 3 and The Amazing Spider-Man played out differently? Another possibility is that some of these characters are being manipulated into hating Spider-Man. We could easily see Defoe's Norman Osborn taking advantage of the situation. Maybe Osborn craves revenge for the death he knows is coming, and he's tricking Sandman and Lizard into thinking they're doomed to meet similar fates. Ironically, Osborn doesn't realize he has no one to blame but himself for his death in 2002's Spider-Man. Godspeed, Spider-Man. <laughs> and while this isn't the biggest question raised by the new trailer, we're intrigued by a scene showing Dr. Octopus's tentacles covered in red nanotech. What exactly is happening here? We see two possible theories. Both of them involve the Iron Spider suit bonding with the tentacles. Either Ock is absorbing the suit and upgrading his signature arms, or Spidey is controlling his armor to shut down his foe's weapons. The latter theory may explain why Ock can later be seen locked away in Doctor Strange's Sanctum Santorum. Peter. You're struggling to have everything you want. If you've been following the news around No Way Home over the past couple of years, you've for sure heard the rumors about Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield reprising their respective spider roles. Even ignoring the rumor mill entirely, it's not exactly a giant stretch to assume some familiar Spider-Men might be joining the fun alongside these classic villains. The new trailer gives us no direct confirmation on that front, but there are some telltale clues that Marvel and Sony are trying to hide some major surprises. Take this shot for instance. We can see Holland Spidey charging into battle against Sandman, Electro, and Lizard, but neither Electro nor Lizard seem to be leaping at Spidey directly. We could easily believe there are supposed to be more Spider-Man in this shot who have been edited out. It would hardly be the first time MCU trailer footage has been doctored to hide major spoilers. Even more telling is the fact that the Brazilian version of the trailer shows Lizard seemingly being punched by an invisible character. Either Spider-Man is teaming up with Drax in this movie, or someone was edited out of the frame. There's no guarantee Marvel and Sony are trying to cover up a Spider-Verse team up here. If those Daredevil rumors are true, it's entirely possible he's the character being CG'd out of this footage. Still, the second trailer directly acknowledges Maguire's Spider-Man when Doc Ock reacts to seeing Holland Spider-Man unmasked. Peter Parker. Ock has a history with a different Spider-Man. Why bring it up if Maguire isn't going to appear in the film? Why introduce these villains if No Way Home isn't going to fully commit to the Spider-Verse concept? Why would they pull a Ralph Boner again? You're... Ralph... Boner? Whatever happens, don't be surprised if Holland isn't the only actor decked out in red spandex this time. Spidey is going to need a lot of help dealing with this new threat. And who better to help than more Spideys? For more about Spider-Man No Way Home, check out our story so far on all of the returning villains. And for everything else, keep it locked to IGN.